Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm happy because we've had 10 million downloads of our stories. 10 million is a very big number. So thank you for being part of that. Our current theme is trickster stories. Last week we heard about a tailor who was brave enough to face a pesky giant and trick him into leaving his town. This week's story also has a giant in it. In this story it's the giant who tries to trick a young boy. The story comes from an island called St Thomas, which is one of the Virgin Islands in the Caribbean. Before we begin, I wonder if you can think what your giant would be like if you told a version of this story. Would it be a giant or would it be a giantess? Would your giant have one, two, three or more heads? And would they be sad or happy? or a cunning trickster giant. Can you have a think about all that while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash Stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. I'm back. I wonder what kind of giant you'd put in your telling of this story. Could you draw a picture of your giant and send it to us on facebook.com forward slash Super Great Kids Stories? Now, it's time for this week's story, which was collected about a hundred years ago by an American woman called Elsie Clues Parsons. The story is about a giant, but it isn't terribly scary as giant stories go. Are you sitting comfortably? Am I sitting comfortably? Then let the story begin. Or, as they say in the Caribbean, mouth open, story jump out. That's right. Once upon a time, on the island of St Thomas, there lived a boy named Jack. Jack lived in a small house with his grandmother. Jack's grandmother was worried about Jack. He was a wild child. He didn't want to help her with the housework. He'd much rather play. His grandma would often try to encourage him by singing. Grandma says no play, this is a work day. Up with the bright sun, get all the work done. Please can you help me dig the potatoes, shake the papaya down? No, 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 Jack would shout back. But each day, his grandmother would take him with her to work in the fields and she would dig and plant and water. But do you think Wild Jack helped? Why, no. Every day he'd dig up a yam and then run away and carve it into an animal or a face. And when he was bored of that, he'd scamper down to the sea and play in the rock pools. Jack's grandmother was not happy. Jack, this is no good, she said, with an exasperated wag of her finger. The two-headed giant lives in those caves near the rock pools. 
They say he lies in wait for children who are playing alone on the beach. And it was true. For years, people had told stories about the giant who had spiky blue hair, yellow eyes, sharp black teeth and a cavernous mouth. And he loved nothing more than munching on prickly sea urchins or a juicy child. But do you think Jack was afraid? Ha! <laughs> Of course not. He just tossed his head, sucked his teeth, laughed and ran off. One morning, his grandmother took a stick of sugar cane from the fields and carefully carved it into a flute, which she gave to Jack. If ever you're in trouble with the two-headed giant, Jack, you toot on your flute loud and we'll know where to find you. Ah, thanks, Grandma said Jack, and off he skipped to play his flute, leaving his grandma to dig the soil, fetch the water and plant the yams all by herself. The weeks passed and the months passed. One day, as usual, Jack slipped away from his grandma in the fields and ran down to the sea. He fished in the rock pools, chased the waves, and then he sat on the rocks, drying out in the rays of the setting sun. He pulled out his flute and began to play his grandma's song. Grandma, make a Johnny cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo. Suddenly, out of the long shadows stepped an enormous man. This was not any old man. This was a giant of a man, as tall as the cliffs with spiky blue hair, black teeth and a cavernous mouth. And not one, but two horrific heads. Ah! Rah, rah, fa la 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 la, the giant roared louder than the sea. Jack jumped. Aha, what have we here, boy? That is a lovely song. Come here and sing it for me again. Trembling, Jack picked up his flute and played. <laughs> Grandma, make a Johnny cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo. Aha! Good idea, muttered the giant, drooling to himself. My wife Janie makes the best Johnny cakes on the island. Come away home with me and you'll see just how delicious they are. Now. Jack loved Johnny Cakes, and he was very hungry. But he knew he was dealing with a tricky giant here, and he did not trust that old giant as far as he could throw him, which wasn't very far, obviously. Ah, uh, thank you, sir, but, but no, said Jack. I hate Johnny Cakes. They're disgusting. What? bellowed the giant. You don't like Johnny Cakes? Everyone likes Johnny Cakes. Jack looked up at the giant. One face was smiling and the other looked like he'd just eaten a lemon. Jack didn't know which face to believe. OK, come home with me and my wife. She'll cook you some piping hot fish and fungi. Ah, thank you, sir, but no quipped Jack. Ah, uh, I'm allergic to fish and fungi. It, it brings me out in spots. What? 
hollered the giant, shaking his two giant heads and wiping the drool from his two cavernous mouths. How about some nice cow heel soup? No, thank you, sir. I don't like eating cow heels either. Well, well, you are a fussy one. Come with me and I'll show you how to be a real wild man. Uh, it's kind of you to offer, sir, but my grandmother, she'll be really, really angry with me if I don't get home soon. Ah, uh, yes, your grandmother. Let me hear that song again, he demanded. Jack sang the song one more time, singing it nice and loud in case his grandmother was nearby looking for him. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo. All right, boy, good song, but I can't quite hear it. I'm getting a little old and deaf. Jump up here on my knee and sing it for me once again. For once, Jack did as he was told. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo. Then the giant said, Climb up here, boy, on my chest and sing it again so I can hear better. Once again, Jack obeyed. He didn't know what else to do. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo. Then the giant said, Stand up here, boy, by this nose of mine and sing it one more time. Once again, Jack obeyed. Well, the smell of that tender little human wafting right under one of his two noses was driving the giant wild. And quick as a flash, he plucked Jack from under his nose and popped him in a sack. That's enough singing for one day, boy. Let's go home and you can teach my wife the song. When he got home, the giant roared for his wife. Jenny, put on the frying pan and make some Johnny cakes. I've a delicious, uh, I mean delightful boy who needs fattening, I mean cheering up. The giant and his wife sat down to a vast plate of Johnny cakes, topped with prickly sea urchins. And Johnny carried on playing his flute and singing his song in the hope that his granny might hear him. The next day, the giant went out fishing. Janey, be sure to give that boy lots of Johnny cakes so he'll be nice and big and round and juicy. And tonight, I will eat him for my supper. <laughs> the boy frantically took out his flute and began to play and sing at the top of his voice. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo. The giant's wife, she clapped. Little boy, oh little boy, play that song for me again. Jack said, I, I will. If you can open the bag a wee bit more so I can get some air. All right, says the giant's wife. And she let Jack come out of the bag a teeny bit. And Jack played and Jack sang.
Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot Kalaloo. The giant's wife, she clapped and cheered and said, Ha, little boy, little boy, play that song again for me. And Jack said, I will, if you can open the bag a wee bit more so I can play with my hands free and this time I'll get you dancing on your toes. All right, says the giant's wife, but my husband will be back soon and then we'll have to stop. And she loosened the bag so Jack's hands were free. Jack played and played and played until she danced on her toes. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot Kalaloo. Meanwhile, up on the cliffs, Jack's poor grandmother was shouting and shouting and shouting for her boy. Inside the cave, the giant's wife clapped and said, Little boy, oh little boy, play that song again for me, please. Jack said, I will, if you can open the bag enough so I can come out. And I'll get you dancing on your head. All right, says the giant's wife, but my husband will be back soon and then we'll have to stop. And she loosened the bag, so Jack was free. And Jack played and played and played and she danced and danced and danced until she was dizzy. Meanwhile, down on the beach, Jack's grandmother was on her knees with worry, watching and waiting and listening. All of a sudden, over the sound of the waves, she heard the sweetest sound in the whole world. Can you guess what it was? That's right. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is coming. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot Kalaloo. Grandma span around and made for that cave straight as an arrow. She swooped in like a hurricane and scooped up her boy in her big strong arms. At that very moment, in came the two-headed giant and he was very hungry. Give me back my dinner, he roared. But Jack's grandma tucked him under her arm and ran and ran and ran. And the giant followed along the squelchy beach. Gurlumph squelch, gurlumph squelch, gurlumph squelch. Can you help me? Gurlumph squelch, gurlumph squelch, gurlumph squelch. He got closer and closer and closer. Jack could see the drool dribbling down the giant's chin. He took a johnny cake out of his pocket and he threw it at the giant's eye. Meow! Splat! Gurlumph! Ouch! Gurlumph! Ouch! went the giant, rubbing his eye. And Jack quickly took another johnny cake out of his other pocket and aimed it at one of the giant's eyes. Meow! Splat! Galumph! Ouch! Galumph! Ouch! went the giant, rubbing his second eye. By the time he'd wiped all his eyes, Jack and his grandmother were halfway up the cliff, ducking and diving and scrambling for their lives towards their home. Come back! Come back! 
I want my dinner, wailed the giant. But Jack and his grandma did not go back. In fact, Jack never went back to those cliffs by the sea again. But his grandmother did sing her song for him every single day. Grandma says no play, this is a work day. Up with the bright sun, get all the work done. If you can help me dig the potatoes, shake the papaya down. And do you know, every day, after the two of them had finished working in the fields, digging the earth, planting the corn and watering the yams, Jack would sit down under the stars and sing for his supper. Can you help me? Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is here. Grandma, make a Johnny Cake, Jack is here. Guava berry, winter cherry, hot callaloo, cha-cha-cha. Until, finally, he fell fast asleep and his grandma would lift him up and carry him inside and put him safely to bed. And that is where that story ends. And the wheel bend and the story end. Oh, I do like a good giant story, don't you? Two heads. That's a bit scary. How would you be able to tell if the giant was happy or sad? Which face would you believe? And I do like the way we learn a bit about the local food in that story. Johnny cakes are delicious round fried bread, often slightly sweet. And hot callaloo is a kind of soup made with greens and sometimes chilli peppers. A bit like an auntie's hot pepper soup. Maybe you could learn that rhyme and teach it to someone else. Now, it's time to have a dig into my bag of happies and say a big thank you to some owlets who've been hopping into our nest and supporting our podcast. Hoo, 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 hoo. And hello to five-year-old Wes from Vermont in the USA, who is a huge fan of super great kids stories. Wes has so many favourite stories, it's hard to choose. Snake and the Holy Man and Mastercat are repeat stories for him. I wonder which are your favourites. And hoo, 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 to new outlets in Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. Hello to Emma, who is six, and Ava, who will be four in September. So pleased you're enjoying the stories. And hoo, 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 and hello to Kyla, who is five, and Orion, who is one, in Ireland. They listen to the stories all cuddled up in bed at night. Lovely. And thanks so much for all your support. We couldn't make these stories without you all. We hope you're enjoying the bonus stories and the super great scary stories. And thanks so much to all of you who've given us a tip on Kofi this month. We really appreciate it. And thanks to all you budding artists who've sent in creative pictures this week. We don't have time on the podcast to mention all of you, but we'll post all the pictures you send on our Facebook page to share with other story fans. Here are my picks of pictures for this week. Thanks to eight-year-old Aranya from New York, who sent us a lovely picture of River Mama the Mermaid, who is sitting on a rock using a silver comb to comb her long, dark hair. I particularly like the attention you paid to her scaly tail and the creatures swimming about in the water. Thanks, too, for your really carefully written letter, Aranya. Lovely to read. And thanks to seven-year-old Julian for your brilliant picture of the beast who wants a feast from Brazil. I like the way you've drawn Djibouti the trickster tortoise with her hard shell, short legs and her long scaly neck. It's super great. 
And thanks to Lily, who is seven in Philadelphia in the US, for your drawing of the enormous turnip. The farmer looks so surprised as he gazes in astonishment at the huge vegetable, which is much taller than the houses. No wonder so many people and animals were needed to heave it out of the ground. Great fun. Thank you, Lily. And thanks to Rieka, who is five, from Auckland in New Zealand, for your beautiful picture of a Nancy and the party. I love it, especially all the wonderful colours that you've used for the water. So effective. Thank you, Rieka. And thanks to Ava, who is six and lives in New York City in the US, for your illustration of the Indian story, The Tiger's Tale. I really like your little stripy tiger cub lapping milk from a 3D bowl and two of the village children enjoying his furry company. And the starry night sky that you've drawn. It's a fun story, isn't it? That's it for this week. If you'd like to see some of these super great drawings, they're on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do send in your pictures for us to share on Facebook with other story lovers. If you'd like to send in a picture, either attach it to our Facebook Messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. Now, if you like Super Great Kids Stories, Here's a chance for you to help us. We'd like you to vote for us in the Listener's Choice category of the British Podcast Awards. To vote, go to www.britishpodcastawards.com forward slash voting. Or look for the link on our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. We'd really appreciate your support. And if you'd like a copy of our colouring book... It's available on Amazon, and you can find a link on our website. Meanwhile, keep telling those stories and singing your songs. See if you can find an easy story to tell and surprise someone in your family by telling them your version of it. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London.